Hey! In this video I will tell you what data engineers do and whether it is a good career choice. I'll be speaking from my own experience as I've been working as a data engineer for the past half a year with financial data. At every company data engineering might look a little different but I believe that what I'll tell you is, you know, roughly applicable to data engineering in general. If you want to know the theoretical description of what data engineers do, then go ahead and read about the ETL process. But if you want to get a practical sense of what the day-to-day -day job looks like, then carry on watching. So, there are five things that data engineers do. Number one, bringing new data to the company. It's not like you snap your fingers, that worked, and, and the data magically appears in the database. It's also not like you receive a beautifully structured CSV file from a data vendor and all you have to do is to copy and paste it into a database. No, putting the data from a data vendor to a database can take anything from a few days to several weeks. Does that surprise you? Tell me, because it really surprised me when I first found out. I was like, why? What's, what's the difficulty? Why does it take so much time? Why is it so complicated? Why is it so hard to send data from one place to another in the 21st century anyway? So it turns out that data vendors are not nice people. Each individual data vendor does exactly what they want. Um, so they send you data in whatever format they want, so it can be CSV or it can be JSON. Um, they send you data in whatever compression format they want, so it might be a zip file or something else. And they basically, they, they don't agree, right? So each data vendor does exactly what they want. And this is what creates the problem for a data engineer. Moreover, their data often is messy and let, let's say, one table will be spread across multiple files or one table will be the same table will be contained in multiple files which means it's duplicated and you have to d detect the duplicates and remove them so yes it, you pay <laughs> crazy amounts of money for data and you get a mess and that was surprising to me, but that's what it is. That's the reality of data engineering. Number two, write a data pipeline or a data feed in other words. Okay, so the next thing that data engineers do is writing a data feed or a script that will streamline this process, automate this process of bringing the new data to the company, to the databases. You're not gonna manually place the data in the database every day, right? If it's a daily data, you wouldn't do it every day. So a data engineer will write a Python script, let's say Python, often Python script, that will place the data, automate the process of placing the data in the chosen file storage system, a script that will also deal with the new files. So for example, unzip them, transform them in any desired way, a script that will automate the creation of new tables or adding partitions to existing tables. That kind of stuff will be written in your Python script. And I mentioned file storage system. You might be thinking, what is a file storage system? What, Windows, Mac? So there are a few popular file storage systems for big data. So, well, big data basically means a lot of data. <laughs> and you can't just store them on a hard disk or, you know, on your computer because it's just so much data. So the popular file storage systems are Hadoop, AWS, so cloud-based uh, systems, and there are many, but I am acquainted with these two. So, for example, Hadoop is an on-site distributed file system, which means there are multiple computers and they are all connected with each other and the data is spread across multiple computers on-site, so you have to physically own those computers. Um, in terms of 
AWS, that's a cloud-based uh, storage system. So there is an S3, um, there are S3 buckets and S3 is a service provided by AWS and that's where the data gets stored. Um, and AWS has plenty of different services. So S3 is just one of them, but there are many others. Same with Hadoop. So Hadoop family has got so many different services. Uh, Hive, HDFS is the, uh, the actual database and so on and so on. And knowing these systems is, you know, a, another big area of knowledge that a data engineer uh, needs to know. Uh, you probably only need to know one of them in a in one particular company because usually companies store the data in one way or in one system. But obviously, if you're gonna change jobs, then uh, the more you know, the better. Okay, number three, views, or in other words, abstracting the data away for the data scientists or an end user needs. If that sounds complicated, let me just break this down to you. So the raw data received from a data vendor might be in a little weird shape that is a bit awkward to query. So let's say there are, let's say they send you data in five different tables and but let's say you want to query the data in such way that you have to use all the five tables at the same time in your query, which is inefficient and annoying because what you'll have to do is to join those tables in SQL every time you que query them. And that obviously is, you know, an additional step for an end user, for a data scientist or whoever is the end user. And it's just annoying. So, your job as a data engineer might be to write an abstraction layer on the tables and um, that will be an SQL view or an SQL procedure. So this is something that will create like a new table, like a new table with any combination of columns from all the tables that you like or uh, that the data scientist or an end user likes and you will have this resulting table that you will then present to a data scientist and they will be happy because they won't have to do any SQL joins, but they will be able to query the data straight away. Number four, monitoring jobs. As you can imagine, the more data sets the company has onboarded, the more jobs or the more data feed pipelines there are to monitor and they're active. They onboard data every day if the data is provided daily, right? So there is always a possibility that this, you know, the feed, this, this, this process of bringing new data will fail on any given day. If you've written everything well, if, if you've written your scripts well, they should be fine. But sometimes, you know, you forget about some edge cases, you didn't take a particular scenario um, into account and, you know, that scenario happens and your feed fails. Or it might not be your fault, it might be just that, say, the data vendor changed the number of columns they had in one table and bam, your validation fails or they changed, I don't know, the names of the columns. And again, let's say your script was checking for those names as a validation step and suddenly the names change, so your script fails. And yeah, you know, every day something like that can happen, especially if you have like plenty of data sets, plenty of jobs. By job, I mean the, pro the automated process of uh, running the code every day. Yeah, so the job can fail and then your job, your job is then to fix it. So you have to investigate why it fails and write a fix. And number five, helping others. As a data engineer, you're the person that will be knowing <laughs> things. Uh, you'll be knowing the infrastructure a little more than others. You'll be knowing... Um, you will know various softwares, like let's say 
uh, Microsoft SQL Server, which is a database software, or DBeaver, another database software. Um, and you will know how to use them. You will know how to connect them to, let's say, Hadoop or AWS. And often end users, so let's say data scientists or some other end users, they will not know how to you know how to do it how to connect things together especially in a program like how to i don't know query how to tables in the beaver they don't know so um for these non-technical folks you have to explain how to do it how to you know download um, the right drivers how to set up connections um, often you'll have to grant some privileges so that they can query the tables um, some permissions I mean yeah so a part of your job will probably probably be helping others um, do their job as well my favorite part of being data engineer is definitely building the feeds so the process of developing a pipeline uh, writing a Python script that's fun. That's what I like. My least favorite part? Yeah, probably helping others. I am a horrible human being. But, you know, downloading drivers for some softwares and, and telling people how to do it on their end. That's just... I, I don't find it very, very entertaining, to be honest. Okay, this is what data engineers do. Data engineers are in demand right now. So you might consider doing it and they are paid nice paychecks. Um, however, my suspicion is that it might change in the future, in the next couple of years. I might be wrong. See, whenever there is a potential for automation, I always think to myself, okay, how long? How long before, you know, things get standardized, things get automated but for now data engineering nice career choice and also just on a separate note we will have to be more agile in the future we'll have to be more adaptive so just because you know today data engineering is a good career but it might not be in five or ten years it doesn't mean it's a bad career to choose because to be honest you will have to, we will all have to get used to the fact and the idea that our skills will be getting obsolete more quickly. So it's not like you can learn one thing and be that person for the rest of your life. That's, that's in the past and now we have to learn new skills quicker. That's the reality of today. All right, um, let me know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like. Bye.